Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very senior and accomplished professional from California, USA, Mr. Dan Gordon. Dan, welcome to the show. I am just so pleased to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Ashutosh. It's a, it's a real thrill. Thank you. Dan is an executive business coach and a speaker, uh, and his organization is called the Dan Gordon Enterprise LLC. So Dan, before we talk about all the amazing work that you've done, tell <laughs> me about your own amazing journey and how did you cope with the initial shock of bankruptcy and what kept <laughs> you going? I love it, man. We're just jumping right into the middle of this. Perfect. So I had an experience that uh, was, well, I I call it uh, the best $80,000 I ever spent. Okay. And what happened is I had a marketing company and I put all of my time and effort and money into this marketing company. And I made some mistakes. And in a month it crashed. I lost $80,000. I was bankrupt. Thirty thousand dollars in debt, looking at being at being homeless, and I and I had what I can only call an emotional breakdown, right? Mm. Literally on the floor in snot and tears. Mm. But here's something that I that I I realized. Mm. Ultimately, I created this situation for a reason, mm. and this is the foundation of everything that I espouse when it comes to leadership and sales and coaching, and that is that we are always the common denominator of everything that happens to us, mm -hmm. right? Everything in our lives is something that we created for a beautiful purpose. Now, at the time, I wasn't thinking, wow, this is a beautiful purpose. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, wow, this is really painful. Absolutely. But I came to a point where, where it occurred to me that the reason that the company crashed is because I didn't like marketing. I'm just really, really good at it. Mm. But it was not supposed to be my career. Mm. And so I had uh, I, I used to teach personal development courses, and I loved doing that. And I was also really good at it. And so I thought, I'm going to get back to doing what I love, what I'm good at, and what really serves people. Now, I had no idea if I was going to be successful at it, right? I mean, like, who's going to hire a business coach who just failed at business? Mm -hmm. But Eight months later, almost to the day that everything fell apart, I walked out on stage in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. being paid $10,000 for my very first speaking gig. Mm -hmm. right? And so the journey from the floor to the stage was all about transformation. Mm -hmm. And that's what I share with, with people, that, that we are the creators of our lives. Mm -hmm. And if things are going in a way that we don't like, then we have the power to transform. It's just really scary. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And, you know, one more question relating to the challenges you went through, because yeah. there great lessons in that. During your emotional breakdown, what were some key strategies or thought processes that helped you move from despair to determination? I, I would say it was more thought processes than strategies. At the time, I just, well, I'll say it this way, when... When we're in crisis, our, the creative pipeline in our brain shuts down, mm. right? Like it is the worst time to come up with solutions, but right. it's the time where we really want solutions. Mm. So I had a, a belief mm -hmm. and my belief was that I think I could be really good at being a coach and speaker. Mm. I didn't really know, but I believed that I could. And the thing is, I decided I was going to find out. Either I was going to be a failure at it or I was going to do really well at it. So my strategy was to challenge my own illusions mm -hmm. of what I believe was possible. Right. And I can tell you that has been the secret of my success, the secret of the success of people that I coach. It is moving your own thinking about what you believe is possible mm -hmm. into a complete new reality. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Thank you. So Dan, we are now going to speak about two different aspects. One is, you know, how you handle mindset barriers mm -hmm. to entrepreneurial success. And second is I'm going to be on compassionate leadership and company culture before yeah. I come to a few questions on for you as a coach. So let me start with the first one. Can you describe a few a key mindset barrier that 
entrepreneurs often face? Yeah, that's a great question. I wrote a book called uh, Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story and Take Action. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that book after this experience because the gap is the space between where you are and where you want to be. Imagine two cliff sides, right? You can see the other cliff side. It's just maybe 30 feet away, mm. right? You can see everything that you want is over at that, at that cliff side. But that gap is this thousand foot chasm. Mm. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I can jump over that, right? Mm. So I, I give that example because that's a story that we tell ourselves, right? Mm. And we're filled with stories, mm. stories like, I can't afford it. I'm not ready yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough experience. Mm -hmm. Now, these don't feel like stories when we tell them, right? They feel like, like when someone says to me, well, I don't have enough money to hire you, Dan. I say, I don't believe that. And I know it's not true. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, I can show you my, my bank account. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I mean, you can point to this thing. I know that you created this reality of scarcity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's just a reality that you've created and you've you've built up that reality so strong that you have resisted money coming into your life. Right. right? It's all based on stories. And if I may, would it be okay if I gave that book away to your audience? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So to get that book, Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story and Take Action, just text the word GAP, G-A-P, to this number, 213-409-8366. Mm -hmm. 213-409-8366. 409-8366, text the word GAP, G-A-P. It is filled with all the stories that you tell yourself sure. and how to jump that gap. Thank you for that offer. Thank you very much. Sure, and sure. A lot of our viewers and listeners will take you up on this option. So my next question is, uh, Dan, how important is self-awareness in overcoming entrepreneurial challenges? Mm. So... If it's okay, can I define what I see as self-awareness first? Absolutely, please. Okay. So uh, as I said earlier, we are the creators of everything that comes into our, our lives, mm. right? The, the things that we don't like and the things that we do like, mm. right? And that is the basis of self-awareness that, you know, I'm in an argument with someone. Well, I can point to that person and say, wow, that person is being a real jerk. Mm -hmm. But the self-awareness part of it is how did I attract them into my life, mm. right? I'm in a job and my boss is a jerk. Well, the question is, why was I attracted to a business or a company or a, a life mm. where there's jerks involved, mm. right? So the basis of self-awareness is accepting the fact that mm. you are the creator of your life. And so mm. that becomes essential mm. because until you're willing to accept that truth, then everything is sort of random. You're a victim. Things happen to you. It's all completely out of your control. Mm. Well said. Right? Well said. And what role, in your view, does emotional intelligence play in entrepreneurial success? Mm -hmm. Again, let's let's go on a definition mm. of emotional in, in intelligence. Intelligence, yeah. Right? So... Emotional intelligence isn't just like, oh, I feel happy, I feel sad, I feel angry, oh, I'm emotionally intelligent. It is understanding that the emotions that you feel mm -hmm. are also your your creation, right? There, there's a very big push in America right now mm -hmm. where uh, we can't shame people, right? Oh, like, oh, don't, don't mm -hmm. shame them. There's fat shaming and slut shaming and this shaming and that shaming. And it's and it's great. Like mm -hmm. I, be, I, I love that we're so much more conscious about how our words affect other people. Right. The problem with that is that when we say that somebody else is causing our emotions, mm -hmm. that is being emotionally unintelligent. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's saying, wow, somebody said this thing and now I have this feeling inside of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. W what is this feeling telling me? Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of times when we feel bad, it's because mm -hmm. we're shaming ourselves. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something and we're using their words like a blunt instrument to beat ourselves up. Well right? So yeah. so the emotional intelligence is really understanding that every emotion that we have is our creation. Mm -hmm. And when you dig deep into what those emotions are, mm -hmm. they, the, the, the upset emotions, it usually comes from, uh, from shame, fear, um, and guilt. Mm. Right? 
And so, yes, other people may say things to trigger that, but ultimately, those are the feelings that you're creating based on the belief system that you have about yourself. Mm, great response. Thank you. Mm. Then we're now going to move and we'll talk about another area of your expertise, which is leadership and culture. Mm. How do you define compassionate leadership in a business context? Yeah, th that's a great question because so many people get that one wrong. People think that compassionate leadership is essentially letting everybody do anything that they want, mm. right? Like somebody shows up 20 minutes late for work and, and you're like, well, that's okay. You, you know, they say, oh, you know, my kid was crying. I couldn't get him to, you know, whatever. And you're like, oh, well, that's okay. I understand. That is not compassionate leadership. Mm. What that is, it is, in, it is enabling leadership. Right. So I had a client, really great guy, owns a landscape architect company. And he was, he thought he was being compassionate by listening to the woes and the problems of his, you know, of his employees and kind of letting them walk over him. And, and what I said is, you have to make sure that they respect the chain of command, mm -hmm. that they understand that you have, as a boss, as a leader, you have the most responsibility of, of anybody in that room. Mm. And it is your responsibility to make sure that that company is solvent, it's moving forward, that you can make payroll. Like that's your responsibility. Right. Compassionate leadership is making sure that you're compassionate for your space, that they understand mm. their space in it. And then once there's that understanding and that and the appreciation of the chain of command, then that opens an entire uh ability to have very authentic conversations, mm -hmm. right? Somebody says, man, I'm, you know, someone's late a lot. You can talk to them and go, you know, I wonder how you're creating that. Like what's mm -hmm. going on in, in your life right now? What's right. the belief that, that you're having, right? Mm -hmm. That's the compassionate leadership part. You're not yelling at them and saying, if you show up late again, you're fired. It's about saying, wow, I, you know, there's something that's corrupting your life that's causing mm -hmm. you to not be here on time. I bet it's happening in, in other areas of your life too. Well said. Thank you. My mm -hmm. next question is how can leaders cultivate empathy while maintaining decisiveness? And, you know, the example that you just gave me about this individual who would listen to everybody, I think this yeah. would be a great question in that example as well. Hmm. So would you ask that again? My question is, how can leaders cultivate empathy mm -hmm. while maintaining decisiveness? I see. Okay. Yeah, the, it, it is sort of that story. Um, let's let's call decisiveness um, getting, uh, making happen what they need to make happen, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, I have a bunch of people who work for me, mm -hmm. right? And there are times where they are not performing. Uh, I understand that 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 there's a struggle that they're facing, right? That's the empathy part. In fact, I'm going to give you an example. I hired a new young woman, and I see in her the capacity to be a leader. Mm -hmm. right? But also, I see in her some fear about making mistakes. Right. Right. So. I'm very bold with her. And I tell her, here's who I see you can be. Mm. And frankly, you're not being that. Mm. And one of the decisive things that I do is I do not allow my employees to apologize. Mm. And the reason I don't allow them to apologize, it's too easy of an out, Absolutely. right? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. So what I say to them is when you make a mistake, I want to know what you learned. Mm. And I also want to know what your plan is to make sure that doesn't happen again. Mm. Right? You got to bring that to me, but I don't want to hear an apology. Mm -hmm. And that's my decisiveness. And that's very hard for a lot of people because we're used to apologizing and getting out of trouble mm -hmm. by apologizing. And what I tell them is you're not in trouble. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you if you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. right? but, I, but I continually focus my employees on, on solution-oriented thinking, mm -hmm. not this parental model where they're in or out of trouble with me. Mm -hmm. Well said. Great response. Thank you. My next mm -hmm. question is, what advice would you give to emerging leaders or startup founders yeah. who are keen to foster a positive company culture 
Mm. So it really starts with you. The you I'm talking to right now, the you who is listening, yeah. the you who just heard that question and go, oh my God, I got to hear the answer. Mm-hmm. Right? I'll say it this way. Anything that you can point to mm-hmm. that you say is the problem is never the problem. Mm-hmm. The thing that you can point to is the manifestation of the problem. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, like for instance, I was talking earlier, the person mm-hmm. who says, well, I can't afford you coach, Dan. I say, well, that that bank account, that's the manifestation of the problem. The real problem is you're living in a scarcity mentality. Right. right? So it very much starts with you, the entrepreneur, mm-hmm. and you have to build a foundation of being a powerful person. It's how you think about yourself. It's how mm-hmm. you relate to yourself. It's, um, it's seeing yourself as a good, competent person and Mm. competent person. And if you do not have those foundational qualities, anything that you build is going to be like building a castle on a swamp. Mm. It's just going to sink. Mm. And there are four, there's, there's four things that most entrepreneurs and most emerging leaders Mm. do not do that is key. And those things are sleep, relieving their stress, Mm. increasing their focus and optimizing their performance. Wow. And people are really surprised when they say, Hey, I really need to make more money. And I say, mm. how much sleep are you getting? They're mm. Like, well, what are you talking about? Right? Mm. Like, you know, where's your stress level? And so there's something I started using that I call my secret weapon. Mm-hmm. And there, there's this, it's a system called binaural beats. It mm-hmm. is a, um, it is sound that is aligned with your brain waves. And believe, like I was gra- I was drag kicking and screaming into this because it sounded so hokey, mm-hmm. but it turns out that the system that I'm using mm-hmm. is used by the US military, by, the, by special forces, um, by the Air Force, by 50 mm-hmm. different um, professional sports teams. And even the FBI has now adopted this. It's called NUCALM, N-U-C-A-L-M. Mm-hmm. And I listen to this every day. I I listen to it at night because mm-hmm. it, it 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 gives me amazing sleep. Mm-hmm. I listen to it during the day because it enhances my focus and relieves my my stress. And mm-hmm. I'd love to turn everybody on to this. So I'm also going to suggest that you text the word calm, C-A-L-M, mm-hmm. to the same number, 213-409-8366. Text calm, C-A-L-M, to 213-409. 409-8366. This is the only binaural beats that has a cl- that's a class three medical device by the F- by the FDA. It um it's been used to treat insomnia, depression. It's even been used in surgeries instead of general anesthesia. It's really amazing stuff. Wow. And it has transformed so much of what I do. Fantastic. Thank you. So, I tell everybody about it. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I love the two words you've given to everyone. Gap and calm. Yeah. Uh, so next few questions, Dan, I'm going to come back to you as a coach. Yes. And my first question when it comes to you as a coach is, what have been some of the biggest challenges you have faced in coaching entrepreneurs and how have you overcome these challenges? Mm. There's two big things. One is finding the clients that best suit me. Mm-hmm. And if 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 you're a coach and you're listening right now, this is key because here's the fact. Uh, you can't coach everybody. Mm-hmm. And a lot of coaches are just looking for those big ticket clients, right? The, the ones that have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. Going after people with a lot of money doesn't mean that they're going to spend their money on you. In fact, Correct. there's a lot of people with a lot of money mm. who are who are very who have a scarcity mentality. Mm. One of my first clients uh, has half a billion dollars, mm. and it was very hard to onboard him because the reason he has so much money is because he doesn't want to spend it. So that's one thing. Finding the right clients means, again, understanding yourself, what you're really good at, right? right? I know that I am an expert 
at diving into how people see themselves, see the world and transforming them mm -hmm. uh, by helping them to become leaders, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm looking for what I call badass entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? And I have a very steep a process of screening people. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. You have to screen people. Right? Right. If people want to book a call with me, they have to fill out a form first so I can learn about them and make sure mm -hmm. that it's a good use of my time. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that you have to be in control mm -hmm. of your clients, mm -hmm. right? Like a, a lot of coaches and look, I've hired so many awful coaches. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on terrible coaches. So I've learned what not to do throughout my, mm -hmm. my career. Mm -hmm. A lot of coaches think that it's the client that drives the coaching. It's right. not, mm -hmm. right? It would be like you having a broken arm and going to the doctor and the doctor going, hmm, how would you like me to fix this? Mm -hmm. It's like, look, you're the doctor, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be in charge. You have to be in charge. In my in the early stages of my coaching, people would say, well, I'm not ready yet. And I'd be like, okay. Right? What I understand, what I know now is that when people say something that I'm not ready, mm -hmm. what they're really saying is I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you as a coach to gently lead them into mm -hmm. their fears. Mm -hmm. And it's not by yelling at them or holding them accountable. It is by meeting them where they are and moving them forward. But you have to be resilient about, uh, about helping people. Because if you're doing it right, you're taking people right to the edge of their greatest fears. Mm -hmm. And I get there really quickly. Mm -hmm. And so what tends to happen is people will stop booking their calls with me. Mm -hmm. And That's so I'm really relentless about calling them up and going, hey, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. Well said. And my last question to Dan, and this is to you personally now, how has your own amazing background and your own amazing journey supported your coaching philosophy, your style, mm -hmm. and your values? Now, that's a that's a big meaty question, my friend. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to answer this as best as I can. Mm -hmm. You, you who are who are listening, mm -hmm. you have trauma. You have trauma inside of you. Mm. Trauma happens to everybody, mm. no matter how wonderful your parents are, no matter yeah. how wonderful your upbringing is. Mm. We experience trauma. And trauma is essentially when our view of our world mm. doesn't match the world that we're, that we're living in. Mm. And sometimes those that disparity is very, very deep. Sometimes it's light. Mm -hmm. but it's still trauma. So my own trauma, the things that I struggled with in terms of my relationship with my father, mm -hmm. my relationship with myself in the world, I was damaged. Uh, frankly, all things be, being equal right now, I, I should be living under a bridge with a needle in my arm. Mm -hmm. wow. But the reason that I'm not is because I decided to face that trauma. I decided to to do what I call stepping into the fire. Right. And so I can tell you everything that's going to benefit you is something that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Every conversation that you don't want to have is the conversation that you need to have. Mm -hmm. Everything that you want is, is on the other side of that gap, those fears, right? So in resolving the traumas of my life, I have moved forward exponentially. Mm. And look, it's not over yet, yeah. right? I'm still unwinding. The, I mean, like, you know, look at you, right? You, you created the most successful pharmacy in your country. Mm. Now, are all of your traumas resolved? Mm. No, would you? And you're so no? right. You're so right. right. I mean, you're so right. Do, do things still bother you? Mm. Like, do you ever feel fearful? Of course you do. Of course. Right? Absolutely. Have you ever thought, oh, I don't really know if I can do this one, right? Of, right. So it's not a matter of getting to some place where everything's fine. It's mm. a matter of having the willingness to do that work. And so this one of the secrets of my success is I am continually working on myself. Well said. Well said. Have people in your life who... um 
who hold your feet to the fire. I have mm. an amazing woman in my life. Her name is Rosalind, the love of my life. Mm. And she is relentless mm. when, when she is presenting me with something that she thinks I need to look at. Mm. Right? That'd be really easy for mm. me to point at her and say, you're, you know, you're the problem. Mm. Now, if you weren't saying these things, I'd feel better. Mm. But instead I, I say, okay, mm. I trust you. Let me do the, the, uh, the, the deep dive. Very interesting. Uh, and then Dan on that note, and your amazing points in the last question, you know, we are all a continuous work in progress. Keep working on yourself. Oh, yes. Yes. The second one, which you said, which is so important, find someone who can hold a mirror to you uh, mm. and, you know, really be able to reflect who you are as an individual. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your own amazing journey. It is, you know, amazing how you have used your own challenges mm. uh, and worked on those challenges and built uh, such an amazing uh, organization, Dan God Enterprise, and how you're giving back to so many different entrepreneurs and other leaders. Thank you also for talking to me about gap, gap and calm. I think very important concepts, <laughs> very important uh, th things that people must understand. If, Thank you for speaking if, to if me. If I and, may, yeah, uh, please, uh, I'll just say it one more, more time. Uh, text the word calm, C-A-L-M, to 213-409-8366 to get a free sample of this beautiful, amazing new calm experience and text the word GAP, G-A-P, to that same number, 213-409-8366. And grab my, grab my book. It's the, it is my gift to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for speaking to me and good luck. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.